not right. Uh, good morning and a very, very warm welcome uh, to you all, whether you're with us here in Roger and Jill's garden, thank you, or whether you're joining us on Zoom. And it is a very, very warm welcome in Roger and Jill's garden. It's um, Richard put a jumper in the car this morning in case he needed it as well as the coat. Uh, he doesn't need it as well as the coat. Uh, so it's lovely to be here. It is lovely to be in your garden, Roger and Jill. Just sitting here, it's just so quiet and peaceful and beautiful. I wonder if we need a service, but here we are anyway. I hope you've all got sight of an order of service. Um, we begin, as we always do, with our welcome and introduction. Welcome to this gathering place, friend and stranger, saint and sinner in all who gather here come with hope or hesitation come with joy or yearning all who hunger all who thirst for life in all its fullness generous god generous savior touch us through your spirit and we're going to take a moment as we have already been doing we take just a couple of minutes just to focus our attention on our surroundings here. So what can you hear? What can you see and feel? Just a couple of minutes to be still and feel this space. as we take time just to be aware in this place, we are aware both of creation around us and of things connected with humanity. And of course, we know that our connections with God's world, with God himself, are not always positive. So we confess the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. God, our creator, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. We are your people. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cries of the hungry. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. May God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, Forgive us and make us holy 
to serve him in his world. Amen. And so we affirm the faith we believe. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of all life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Amen. And so we hear, please, our reading for today, which is one of the lectionary readings for today. Thank you, Jill. Are you okay reading it or holding it? Do you want me to? <laughs> one day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, may your holy name be honoured. May your kingdom come. Give us day by day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone who does us wrong and do not bring us to hard testing. And Jesus said to his disciples, suppose one of you should go to a friend's house at midnight and say, friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine who is on a trip has just come to my house and I don't have any food for him. And suppose your friend should answer from inside, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Well, what then? I tell you that even if he will not get up and give you bread because you are his friend, yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. And so I say to you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For those who ask will receive and those who seek will find, and the door will be opened to anyone who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jill. Luke tells us Jesus was praying in a certain place. And his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. We're going to reflect this morning on something of how Jesus prayed and how we pray. Luke says Jesus was praying in a certain place. Let's just pause for a moment and think about where we pray. Is there any place or setting that is special for you when you pray? We know that Jesus prayed together with his disciples. But the Gospels also tell us about times when he went away to pray on his own, in lonely places, early in the morning, throughout the night, up mountains, into gardens, away from crowds. I wonder what he found in those places alone with God, in God's creation. All throughout Christian history, solitude has been important for prayer. 
the natural world has been important for prayer. And when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer, we go on a journey from God's holiness through longing for God's ways, through to our needs and God's provision. And then we come on to asking for God's help in our response. God's help to shape all our relationships. And then the story that Jill read for us about the friend at midnight encourages us to keep on praying, even when it's hard going, even when nothing has to happen. We're going to take some time now to allow God to lead us into prayer. I'm going to send you away to walk around Roger and Jill's garden for five to ten minutes and then gather back here. And of course, if you prefer to just remain seated here and enjoy the garden from your seat, of course, please do that too. Just allow God to lead your feet. Roger and Jill have said we can go anywhere in the garden. Is that yeah? So just allow God to lead your feet. Allow God to lead your prayers. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I haven't a clue how to start. Maybe you'd like to look for things in the garden that show you something of God's love or God's holiness. Or maybe you'd like to look at things, look for things that remind us how we bound into a web of connections with one another, with all of creation. We'll take those five to ten minutes to go and let God lead you. When we return, we'll share if you want to, and then we'll pray together. Over to you. Welcome back. I think such is the power of creation when we allow ourselves time to engage with it, that actually I suspect we could have spent a lot longer than 10 minutes wandering around this garden. And that's so important that we remember those times when we are part of God's natural world. So. Before we move on, we come to the bit where have we anything that we would like to share? Anything that you would like to share with everyone about the time when you've been wandering around the garden? Anything at all? Nobody's got anything, that's absolutely fine. But anything that they'd like to share? But I'll start off that. I, you're right, I could have stayed walking around there for a long time. It made me appreciate what just what a beautiful place we live in. And we don't always uh, appreciate it and take time to look around. And you can understand why so many people, you know, come so many miles just to visit this area in a, in a weekend. That's uh, but there's so many things that uh, brought back memories as well to me. And uh, one of the things was got to the top of the garden, and then this horse was let out. A young girl let this horse out into the field, and he just galloped and galloped and galloped and kept galloping. And I'd never seen that for a long time, apart from the Lloyds Bank advert on TV. And um, this horse, it just sort of, yes, I'm free, I'm away, you know, I can go and enjoy this and felt off. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. I'm just reminded of uh, fruit and vegetables. There's lots of lovely fruit and vegetables here in, in, the, in Jill and Roger's garden. And just, you know, what, what a glory that is to have fresh fruit and vegetables in your garden. Thank you. 
it's how God provides that abundance and, and not just for us, but for the insects, for the birds. I mean, I, we grow fruit and veg at home and the times I sit and watch the blackbird in the raspberries and, you know, there's plenty for us. It's, there's enough for us, there's enough for the blackbirds. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just, you know, the holly bushes as well, the, the berries that will come later on for, for the birds. It's, God provides for everybody, you know, all creatures of earth. Thank you. Anyone else who they'd like to share? I was thinking how I was listening. I was because you started Louise by inviting us to sort of what what could we hear, what could we see, and I closed my eyes so that it was, I was focused on what I could hear. And so I was wandering around, listening, listening to the birds, which I do from time to time, but really focusing on the birds and the wind in the trees, and just thinking that all of that is there in the background all the time, and it's about tuning into it and thinking that's that's a bit like my sort of walk with god that that it's it's there <laughs> but often because i'm also distracted as i'm wandering around thinking there's a weed and i start to pull it up <laughs> um, by the domestic drama going on next door which is two a mother and daughter of the horse and the foal being separated which is why it's all the noise so but it's there as a sort of thing to, to keep coming back to thank you Anyone else like Roger? I think being outside is a great place to pray, to be aware of God's presence. There's just so much going on. The things that people already have mentioned, but also the people driving up and down the Edo Road, the people walking up on the brinks, um, enjoying being here. And then the sense of the trees. I love the trees. They've been able to withstand the drought. And so they're looking wonderful at the moment. I've been thinking about um, Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And the, I love the King James Version and the ambiguity about whether the help comes from the hills or from God, the question mark at the end of that little phrase or not. And I think it's both and that um, by connecting with the natural world, we experience the joy of the natural world. And it's also an icon. It's a pathway and a, 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 gate, to, that, a gate to heaven and of understanding God. Thank you. Anyone else, anything they'd like to share with all of us? Okay, thank you very much. I, I absolutely love these times of sharing. Times when we're all theologians, we can all do the sermons. And we've spoken of our connections with God's world and how we gain from that and of course we know in our present present uh, global crisis we know that if we are connected if we remember how much we love god's world god's world will gain from that too so many many things with beauty our well-being our connectedness and of course we've got all of those together here this morning let's pray we're going to give thanks for all that god has given and for our connections to all that God has made. Creator God, we thank you for the peace and renewal we find in nature. Thank you for this garden and for the privilege of gardening, of sharing with you in your creativity. Help us to cherish the role you have given us of stewards of all that you have made, that our care may reveal something of your love. Amen. Sustainer God, we thank you that you've made us part of your web of life, with our well-being dependent on the well-being of all. Help us in all we do and say to work for the flourishing of all. For your glory. Amen. Redeemer God, we pray for those without easy access to green spaces. Inspire and guide us and our leaders that we may create communities where all are able to enjoy and to share the riches of your creation. 
where all may learn to live in harmony with all life. Amen. Finally, I'm going to pass this dish round if it doesn't blow away. I'm going to invite all of you to take a jigsaw piece. And as you imagine in the coming days, weeks, you imagine maybe what's on the rest of the jigsaw, or maybe imagine yourself as a jigsaw piece. I hope that this will act as a little reminder to you of the connections that are God's jigsaw, the connections that we are part of. If you'd like to take one and pass them on. And in case you're wondering, the whole picture is a picture of a bumblebee on a bramble flower. So I can, if you're desperate, I can show you the whole picture at some point. Once everyone's got one, we'll pray together. And now, as we did last time, we're going to pray together. You're going to lead our prayers. I'm going to pass around the holding cross. When you're holding the cross, just pray as you feel led. So either you can either pray silently if you wish, you can pray out loud, you can mention something that you would like all of us to pray for. Just follow as you feel led. And when you're ready, just pass the cross on to the next person. And when it's been all the way around, it'll come back to me. Let's pray. I want the microphone just wave and I'll hold it out for you. Thank you for the abundance in your garden that helps sustain us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for friendships and fellowship. Amen. Amen. I'm just, <coughs> I'm just praying for all the people that are missing out on these special Sunday services. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the communities that we live in and the love shared for between neighbours. Amen. Amen. I'm just reading what it says on this cross, which is life and joy and love and peace and thanking our creator God for all those things. Amen. Amen. Open our minds and our hearts to the world around us, the natural world, the people with whom we live, their joys and their sorrows so that we may be at one with them and with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you, Lord, for your generosity and pray for a similar generosity in those around us and who lead us. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the peace and the pleasure we find in gardens. And we thank you that it is a way of seeing God, your love for us. Amen. Amen. God, our maker, you care for us. You hear our prayers. Keep all those for whom we pray in your love and peace. And bring us all at the last to the joy of your home in heaven. Amen. And so let's sum up all our prayers spoken aloud and spoken in silence in the words that Jesus himself taught us, in whichever version or language you feel most at home. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our closing prayer this morning. Each thing we have received, from you it came, O God. Each thing for which we hope, from your love it will be given. Kindle in our hearts within a flame of love to our neighbours, from the lowliest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all. Amen. We're going to hear our prayer of blessing and then we'll take just a few more minutes to sit in silence to enjoy this lovely garden. And looking at the cloud, it looks like the rain might be timed absolutely perfectly to tell us when the end of the service is. So let's hear our blessing. And now may the blessing <clears throat> of the God of life be ours. The blessing of the loving Christ be ours. The blessing of the Holy Spirit be ours to cherish us, to help us, to make us holy. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's take a few moments in silence as we finish our service.